AI tools in photo editors have improved at such a breakneck pace that it seems like they've been around for ages. But it was only this year that Adobe rolled out a beta version of Photoshop with a generative imaging fill tool. And it was only September when they rolled out their generative fill in the production version of Photoshop. Meanwhile, over in the Ukraine, boutique development company Skylum were working on their own AI fill. They announced their Generaze tool in August and released it at the end of October. Both of these tools purport to do the same thing, to leverage the power of machine learning to replace a portion of an image with an entirely computer-generated replacement that merges perfectly with the original. I decided to put the two AI fills through their paces and see if David Skylum could beat Goliath, Adobe. Now, before we dive into the results, I would like to clarify that this is a test of the unguided generative fill only. I just want to select stuff and make it disappear. We're photographers after all, not prompt engineers. I want a quick and simple solution. Having to experiment with combinations of words in text prompts to achieve the same effect is not something I'm interested in. So that means I'm just hitting the generate button in Photoshop with no text guidance and I'm using the Generaze tool in Luminar Neo, not the Gen Swap tool which is that app's guided generative fill. For the purposes of this test, I selected six images with varying degrees of complexity. I wanted to push these tools as far as I could, and some of my tests aren't changes you'd realistically make to a photograph, but the results did surprise me. I'm a landscape photographer, and so that's the main focus of this test, to see how each app handled itself when presented with small to large fill areas. My first test shot was a cityscape taken in Hyde Park in Sydney. I wanted to see how the apps did removing people because this is something photographers might want to do to clean up the shot and simply show the landscape. I decided to remove the figures on the right. There's actually three people in that part of the shot, the figures in the front and someone behind the statue. Luminar Neo did a great job of removing all of them while also recreating the leg of the statue and adding partial buildings and vegetation to the background. It also did a great job creating a seamless stone look effect to the fountain's boundary stone right down to adding a texture between the individual stones. Any way you look at it, this was nice work. It's a slightly different process on Photoshop. Rather than brushing, you use the select tool to drag the marching ants around whatever you wish to remove. I selected those front figures on the right and the person in the background and hit the generate button. Photoshop then gave me three options all of which were inferior to Luminar's one option. So I hit the generate button again to see if it could do any better, but actually the results were worse. Photoshop was the quickest of the two apps, taking 13 seconds to generate three options, as opposed to Luminar Neo's 20 seconds for a single option. But since Luminar's was a far better result, I'm giving them a decisive win on this one. For the next test, I decided to try a ridiculously hard one just to see how far I could push the generative fill in the two apps. First up was Luminar, and I did a quick paint over of the three frontmost electrical poles and hit the generate button. This time it took the app 35 seconds to generate a result. The results were mixed. The pole on the right was dealt with fairly well but two weird looking humans were created behind the poles on the left. With Photoshop, I decided to use the object selection tool to select the three poles. It took 16 seconds to generate three options for me, two of which didn't remove the poles at all, just relocated them. I was decidedly underwhelmed by the results and wondered if this was because the object selection gave no overlap to the background. So I ran the generative fill generation again this time drawing loosely around them with the lasso tool. 
18 seconds later, I did get three better options, the best of which was the second option, far and away the best result for the two apps for this image. It did a great job on the brickwork, fixed up the tram, and mostly resisted the urge to make mutant human post hybrids. I'll give this one to Photoshop. For my third option, I decided to test scenario that landscape photographers might actually use, removing evidence of human-made structures from an image. First up was a Luminar Neo, and it took 25 seconds to produce a moderately successful patch job. It did appear to leave a line in just above the pond grasses, but everything else was great. Photoshop took 16 seconds and produced a far superior result. The fence lines and raised path were completely removed and realistic looking vegetation was added that didn't suffer from that clone stamped repeat look. Definitely a win for Photoshop. For the next test I decided to try the apps on a night shot I took at the local wharf. The tricky thing with this one is the light cast by the lamp I'm removing. Luminar Neo took 27 seconds and the results were excellent. I expanded the mask area to take in more of the light cast by the lamp and it did a brilliant job. Would have been nice to add back some of the boats, but the end result is a clean looking image with no weird AI rendering issues. Photoshop took 18 seconds to give me my three options. The first was excellent with boats added into the background. Two and three were similar. But I thought the third option was the best since it dealt with the wharf riad but also gave me some good looking yachts in the background. This was a really close run one. Neo did a better job of removing the white colour cast from the lamp, but Photoshop did a better job with the railings and the boats in the background. I'm going to give this one to Luminar, despite the fact that the railings are a bit warped, because ultimately I wanted evidence of the light removed. So this is a marginal win for Luminar. My fifth shot is a landscape image I took down at the local estuary. It's a good example of exactly the sort of thing you might choose to remove from a landscape photo. The first time I ran this fill in Luminar, it crashed to the desktop. Second time, it took 23 seconds to produce a pretty average result. It removed all the branches I flagged, but then added a new one back in, which kind of defeated the purpose somewhat. But the resulting fill is really clean and there's no way you'd notice the change. Photoshop took 14 seconds to give me three options, all of which were excellent. The third was the best though, with an absolutely seamless fill transitioning into the background of the image. Given that Luminar Neo crashed to the desktop and then did a half-hearted job on the fill, I'm giving this one to Adobe. My last image was a real edge case and not one I expected either of the apps to cope with too well. First up was Luminar Neo and I asked it to remove the graffiti artist from the image. It was a big ask, but I don't think I was fully prepared for the disturbing result which it took 29 seconds to render. Rather than remove the dude, Neo decided to replace him with some floating manky footed anorak wearing suburban ghost rider. Thanks for the nightmare fuel Skylum. Photoshop failed to rise to the occasion too, but managed not to scare the shit out of me. It took 16 seconds to give me three options. It struggled a bit with a complete wipe of the bloke and his ladder, giving me an upturned milk crate, a child's trailer toy, and a hybrid box with wheels on it. I decided to re-roll the Photoshop generations, and the second time around it gave me a child's car seat with a cake in it, a cupboard with an inset motorcycle insignia, and last but not least, a wooden stool. Final one goes to Photoshop in a landslide, but thanks to Neo for the comedy value. So that makes the score 4-2 to Adobe Photoshop for the unguided generative fills. After I'd finished this test, I decided to see if the text-guided Gen Swap tool in Luminar Neo could improve on the weirder results I got. And after a bit of trial and error, I found it did do a better job when you explained what you wanted to replace the existing image data with. For instance, here's the poster image. After a series of results that were even worse, I tried a simple wall and poster, and this was the result. The other images weren't as dramatic an improvement, but they were all better than the unguided results. So it is 
possible to get closer to Photoshop's outputs in Luminar Neo if you're prepared to spend some time testing out text prompts until you find one that does the job. I do have to congratulate the Skyland team though. They're pretty close to Photoshop and they're doing it with a dev team that's probably about one one hundredth of the size of Adobe's in a country that's currently being invaded by Russia. Oh, and for the record, before someone tells me how expensive Photoshop is, outside Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales, Luminar Neo actually costs more at 20 bucks a month than the Adobe Photography Bundle at $14 a month. And you get Photoshop Lightroom Classic, Lightroom for Mobile and Adobe Express into the bargain. I'm all for independent software developers, but let's be honest about the costs. And that'll do us for this little test. Do you use any of these new AI tools to tidy up your landscape photos? Or do you simply prefer to keep it real and just not photograph stuff you don't want in a shop in the first place? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you got value from this content, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more photo, drone and video content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.